This video is an introduction to JavaScript debugging in Visual Studio Code using the Chrome debugger extension. Uh, it's a very simple example designed to show you some of the shortcuts that will make your programming as efficient as possible. The, uh, there's no, after this is set up, there'll be no saving files. You don't have to refresh the browser in order to see what uh, effect your uh, co JavaScript code and your HTML is having uh, inside the browser. The uh, debugging, though, is performed inside the Visual Studio Code IDE environment. You can very easily set a breakpoint, so stop your code at a particular location, or step through line by line, or also set up a, a watch. Watch uh, The watch window allows you to uh, watch your variables and watch expressions that you want to set up. The, uh, the first step now here is to install, uh, well, first step is to install Visual Studio Code. And again, keep in mind that's not the same thing as Visual Studio. This is a lightweight uh, cross platform environment. And, um, and also, you need to install Chrome. And of course, all these things are free as well as the extensions we're about to install. So the first step is to click on JavaScript to install JavaScript support. I've already done that. That doesn't take much time. Just click on it. That's all you have to do. And the next step is to install the extension for Chrome. And just type Chrome and it will locate that extension for you. There will be a green install button here. You just click on that and uh, momentarily that will be installed as well. I've already installed that. So now the next step is to add a workspace, which is kind of the project space. Again, our example here only really is going to have well one file and a setup file, but uh, it's good practice to for larger projects. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to find a simple path in the user. And we're going to add a folder in my user directory. And we're going to call it Y. And that's going to be our folder. So now we have a, an untitled workspace here. Uh, and we're going to want to first set up a file. And I'm also going to call that y.html. So at this point, we want to set up, put in some HTML, but there's a really nice shortcut available for that. Now keep in mind that you have to have uh, set up a file like this so that it, the environment knows that you're using an HTML file. So if we just type HTML, and we can come down here to this uh, block with the dots underneath it, and it gives us a nice template for our HTML. It saves a lot of typing. Like I said, we're going to just do a very simple example here. Uh, so I actually don't really care about the head with all the uh, attachments. So just stick with something very simple. And we'll do kind of a hello world sort of example. We can say a equals hello. Note that as I'm typing, the uh, the editor is adding my quotes for me. And now, if I just want to write that out, I can do a document write. It's also going to add uh, my. I just typed the open parenthesis. It added the close parenthesis for me. And we're just going to print out that uh, variable a. Now, uh, it turns out that unlike c uh, in JavaScript, the you're actually supposed to have semicolons here, but they are completely optional. It will still work. Um, and also inside this environment, so let's say I don't have very good formatting. I've got things all over the place. Well, I can just come in here, right click. 
come in here and right, right click click format uh, document and it will automatically format everything nicely for me and there's ways to change that those settings in the formatting to the uh, the style that you prefer so that can be a huge time saver um, so the note off up here that this uh, there's a dot here which basically that indicates that the uh, the file is not saved now uh, what I've got I've got this configured such that it will automatically save as soon as you click outside the window so note that when I click outside the window automatic changes to an X that means it's saved and the way that you configure that is by going here to the gear and settings and uh, so we can have, you can just type save, it's actually right there in front of us. See down here, auto save, you just change this to uh, on focus, what I have it set is on focus change, or so as soon as you go outside the window, or change, as soon as you change focus, I should say, it will automatically save the file. You can do on window change, you can Set it to a certain delay after a certain amount of time to have it say, save uh, regardless of what's going on, which could save you in case you for, in case the uh, in case you have a power loss. Uh, we can also have a format on save too, which is uh, kind of nice to have. And of course, here, like I said, you can set the the format on save timeout for auto save delay and things like that. Um, also, one of the other important things to find in here in settings, again, it's really nice, you don't have to go searching around for these, uh, you don't have to go through a bunch of menus to find the settings, it, uh, it's, they're all searchable. So the other thing we want to do is to uh, look for uh, the breakpoint. So uh, by default, the environment doesn't allow you to uh, run breakpoints in an HTML file. So what you really want to do, since we're going to be running the JavaScript inline, uh, you want to click on, click on this to allow uh, breakpoints everywhere. And that will allow you to uh, use the breakpoints. If, that, if you're finding that that uh, doesn't work for you, the breakpoints don't work, you might have not set this value. And uh, of course the new environment here, they using the uh, you don't have to actually click OK. Uh, as soon as you as soon as you change the, the setting, it is all set. And uh, now we, so we actually have our program set. And uh, now at this point we want to see if we can debug it, but we have to we can start debugging, but we actually don't have a configuration set yet, so that's that's important thing to do. So I want to uh, open my configuration. So it's going to actually create a new file for me. And the environment I'm interested in uh, is is the Chrome. Now, if you don't see Chrome, this means you haven't installed the Chrome Debugger plugin. You can also do Node.js. So now the the way that we're doing this in this setup is you don't really need to have a uh, web server installed on your machine. This is just going to open the file directly inside Chrome. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to create this, um, this JSON uh, configuration file. And as it turns out, you really don't need the web root, but I do need to know the location of my file. So I can right click on that and copy the path and uh, we actually want to change this over to file since we're opening it directly in the browser as a file and then we want to erase the local host and put in our path now what's kind of odd here is they've adopted uh, the unix style uh, environment paths so it's complaining believe it or not about the windows style even though we're in windows so again this is designed to be cross-platform so uh, I can hit control H and do a, a find replace on the backslash and replace it with a slash and um, 
replace all of those items. So now we should be all set up to um, debug this now. So we can, uh, of course I can close my settings. I can uh, close my setup environment. And we can go in here. And what you do to set a breakpoint, it's a little red dot. It's the location which it's going to stop uh, debugging at a particular, uh, and this is before, it, the, the breakpoint at this location on line 6 is before this document write has been executed, but it's uh, of course after this line, so you actually have to execute to the next line in order to see what the effect of the uh, previous line of code uh, is actually doing. So now let's try this uh, debug again. And we just hit start debugging. Of course you could hit F5. Uh, save yourself some time uh, not using the by not using the mouse. So here except left out one small important detail script. So now the debugger or the environment has actually uh, closed up my script for me. Uh, I can again, I could either, if I didn't have that uh, auto format setting set, I would have to format it manually. But since I set that, note that it just went through the process of, of formatting that for me. So let's try that again. So now we've, uh, the debugger has stopped at the document write. It's already executed this line of code. Now if we go back into the uh, Chrome browser, you'll see that it has a statement here that says paused in Visual Studio Code. So uh, if we want to continue this, and I kind of note, note that there, this, uh, this yellow it's kind of a sideways house is uh, showing you that the that this is the line of code that's going to be executed next. And we have a bunch of controls up here. You can uh, just uh, hit the play button to continue. That's also F5. We can step over, uh, use that to step over a function, or you can step into a function, which is uh, what we can do to get to just go down one line. Um, the now, if we want to, uh, and of course, notice that the environment allow gives you a lot of information about all of the different functions that you're working with, so that can be very helpful. And uh, note too that we can look and see what the value of individual variables are. So the in this case we have set. Uh, the a variable to the hello string and of course too if we want to put this in the watch window we can do that by right clicking on it and, uh, and we can say debug add to watch and so it'll show up over here so it'll constantly tell us what the value that is now of course we can add additional expressions so I mean I can even do something like a plus space world and the expression will give me that value uh, it just constantly updates that value for every line that can be useful for uh, making doing comparisons and uh, kind of hypothetically <clears throat> deciding what you would like the value to be and of course, note that uh, we also have the, the stack, the global variables are being tracked as well. You can open those up. A in this case is a global variable. So you can find out information on all the different available variables and functions. <clears throat> so um, now the next thing we can do here is just execute the uh, hit play and that will terminate the program but it actually still open in the browser. 
and uh, well, my program worked just fine. But uh, of course, if I want to remove the breakpoints, I can do that as well just by clicking on it. Now, of course, the uh, breakpoints only work inside of a script. It's not going to work here. As you'll notice, this is HTML, so this is not. It's not going to allow you to put a breakpoint on HTML. It only allows you to only allows you to step through actual code. So we want to remove that. Remove this one. Uh, also, this environment is uh, very configurable. You have uh, the ability to move the windows around. You can split them if you have a uh, multiple. You want to have two items open uh, at the same time. Three. We can close these. Also, note uh, this is a really nice feature. It's a uh, it's a scroll bar allows you to see uh, the code. Uh, so, so what you can do is it kind of helps you. It's kind of a miniature view of your code. Allows you to as you, as you add, add additional code. It's going to allow you to see exactly what's uh, going on. It allows you to. So, if you have a really long program, in other words, it allows you to see uh, exactly. Allows you to find things inside that. Uh, a long document and you can see that it's constantly updating it uh, there so that's a yet another time saver so uh, that is about it and uh, we'll have more videos coming through soon have a good one